Hi guys, welcome to a new episode of Peace Talk Podcast. Today we had a very special guest, uh, a great stand-up comedian from Kyiv. His name is Oleksandr Kachura. Make sure you look him up and see his performances. He's hilarious. We talked about uh, his life a little bit, how he uh, lived in uh, different countries before, uh, what brought him to stand up, and his experience during the full-scale war, his experience uh, being in uh, neighborhood territorial defense. And I think uh, you're going to find this podcast very interesting. So enjoy. Make sure you give it a like too. Uh, a new episode of Peace Talk podcast, you guys. Hello. So we have a special guest who came here all the way from Kyiv, Oleksandr Kachura, right here. My co-host, Valeria Mikhailova, and myself, Anastasia Sid, everyone's favorite. Anyways, um, <laughs> you, you are. Um, <laughs> okay, so... Um, Yeah, I'm very excited about our guest, uh, Oleksandr. Uh, I saw his performances in Kyiv. I know you are uh, a regular uh, at English open mics uh, in Kyiv. Do you host those as well? Yeah, I usually host them. Uh, yeah, well, thank you very much for inviting me today. It's, it's a pleasure for, for me that, for that I'm here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm usually host at the open mics uh, and at all the events mm -hmm. in English events. That's Eng usually the way it works. Uh, nice. So, how often do you have uh, English events uh, in, like, stand-up events in Kyiv? Uh, once per month or mm -hmm. twice per month, I mm -hmm. think. Uh, last month it was uh, twice per month because we had uh, the uh, Feder and uh, Victor. Victor. Yeah. yeah, we had them as guests on the previous podcast. Y yeah, actually. and they came to yeah. Kyiv as well, mm -hmm. and then we had just. Uh, re regular uh, English event. Yeah, I so um, yeah, usually it's twice two two party parties per per month. I I was in Kyiv a, a week ago and I saw um, that you were gonna have a show on Wednesday, uh, English uh, stand up, but it wasn't an open mic. It was a closed. Uh, yeah, now we uh, don't have so many open mics uh, because usually. Uh, Not so many people come to see the open mics, but mm -hmm. we have the, the closed shows mm -hmm. because it gathers more people. Yeah, that's that's a good strategy. Um, so we uh, also have English open mics here uh, in Lviv. And uh, right now we're doing it once a month. Uh, we just started doing them, I don't know, like in, what was it, December? No, earlier. Uh, September. I don't Se know. I think September... Uh, was or maybe uh, August August September was the first uh, English open mic that we did in uh, Kult Comedy Hall and since then it's be it became uh, like a regular thing and um, it kind of the audience kind of shifted because before the war there was uh, a lot of uh, expats living in Lviv uh, as well as in Kiev um, then just like few uh months like two two months before the full-scale war a lot of people fled from cave and moved to Lviv so we had a lot more expats then when the full-scale war started all of them left there's only like few individuals that stayed and um, then we had uh, like around March, we had a lot of journalists coming in, but they were not really engaged in like social life because they would come in here for to do a job, like journalists and volunteers. They just come to see stand up during war. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the reason why they came. Uh, yeah, but there was a one man that uh, was come here just for this. Uh, I'm about Patrick because he was doing this film about comedy yes. at war. Yeah, so we have a, a friend, uh, uh, Patrick, so uh, he's uh, from America, and he's a journalist, and he's making a documentary, but then we invited him to participate in stand-up, so he was uh, performing as well. Mm -hmm. But I was talking about the audience, so um, 
uh, so it was only journalists and volunteers who would who wouldn't really engage in social life but now some people are settling in ukraine mm -hmm. so I've, i've spoken like i go to a lot of like speaking clubs um and uh, there uh like i heard a lot of people say that they decided to stay in in lviv where it's more calm than you know central or uh, eastern ukraine uh and now they're engaging in social life more so we we do have a lot I'm of sorry, like just expats. imagine a foreigner coming kind of like well i i thought we're the same maybe in bakhmut but i chose Lviv because it's mm -hmm. more calm you know <laughs> yeah Sorry it was a bad like joke. That. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, that's that's pretty much how it happens because like a lot of there are a lot of people who like are so eager to go to the front lines. And uh we I had a guest here, um my friend Svetlana, she worked as a fixer and now she works in a volunteer organization. And she was like addressing people who want to come to Ukraine, telling them, Don't don't rush to go to front lines it's dangerous unless you are like qualified to be there you know and you have a job to do sh yes but otherwise there's you you're gonna be in the way you know and uh, and same like about ukraine like you can come like if you have some sort of mission something to do but if you just want to come and like see what's happening um not uh, not the best strategy you know you have to really research and like you know be useful like that's you know there's you need to contribute somehow if you want to come to a, a war zone i i think maybe i don't know maybe it's not yeah, the I'm, best uh, message uh, but it's true i wanted to uh say about the audience well uh in after the Uh, full-scale invasion there were no foreigners here and mm -hmm. we tried to uh, un the underground stand up tried to make some uh, open mics but there was nobody and many mm -hmm. times they had to cancel it because mm -hmm. uh, there were no people and mm -hmm. people who came there were just a few ukrainians and it was just like ukrainian mm -hmm. telling ukrainians jokes in english yeah and it was something like that similar thing happened here but in i really too. like the latest tendency For example, uh, during the previous three or four shows, there were more and more foreigners. It feels mm -hmm. like they keep mm -hmm. coming back to Ukraine. Maybe they feel that it's not so dangerous as it, as it was. They, maybe many of them, they realize that they can already come mm -hmm. to travel to stay here for at least few days. And there are many foreigners who just come and visit the open mics. Mm -hmm. and, This uh, makes me feel really happy because, uh, for example, at the last, at the latest show we had, it was like full of foreign people, mm -hmm. and it was it wasn't useless to mm -hmm. speak English mm -hmm. because uh, Vasil Bayadak, for example, he even has a joke like he uh, says, uh, "Clap your hands, who's who's the Ukrainian here?" And like mm -hmm. the whole audience claps, and he's like. Why am I talking to you in, in English? <laughs> yeah. I have shitty English. Why should I say it to you? Yeah, and last time there was even a journalist from uh, Irish Times, the Irish Times. Oh, yeah. And he even, he came mm -hmm. accidentally and he oh. saw the show. He really enjoyed the show and he made uh, the article about us yeah. at the... Uh, Irish Times, but yeah, we didn't no. manage. None of the comedians managed to see the article because you have to pay for the subscription for the, the yeah. Irish Times. I mean, we're comedians; they should yeah. like. And we we're like, you should send us no money, money for the sub yeah. subscription for yeah. us to see that. Yeah, I saw uh, Anna Kuchera. Um, Kuchera. Right? I'm sorry. I keep fucking up her name. I don't know why. Kuchihura. Anna Kuchihura and uh, Masha Fischuk. Mm -hmm. Fischuk. They shared uh, on their Twitter feed that uh, they were mentioned in the uh, in the article, which I haven't read because I didn't subscribe. You have to Sorry, pay. Irish yeah, Times. Because you have to pay <laughs> yeah. to the Irish Times. They are not worth it. <laughs> Sorry, we have money only for donations here. <laughs> not yeah, for well, subscribing. Yeah, all the extra money Irish goes to, to the army these days. Um, yeah, so... Um, Alexander mentioned uh, underground stand-up. That's the stand-up club that you are. Yeah, this is the stand-up stand club uh, in uh, Kiev, mm -hmm. and it's one of the biggest stand-up clubs. One in of the Ukraine oldest as well. and oldest, yeah, or the oldest one. Yeah, I think the oldest one. How uh, how long ago did it start? Like ten years. Uh, 
I'm not sure. I, I think, think it was, mentioned. yeah, it's about 10 years, seven years, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something yeah. like that. It's more or less 10 years. Mm-hmm. You should mm-hmm. ask Sviat about that. Yeah, it's that's that's awesome. That's like stand-up history. You guys are like part of the stand-up history in Ukraine now. The oldest stand-up club. Well, I joined it not so long uh, yeah? ago. How long uh, have you been doing stand-up? S- I've been doing it since uh, 2018, I guess. Mm-hmm. So I, I lived in Kiev for a little bit, um, like two two years ago, and I used to go to like open mics and English open mics. So I heard a little bit of your story that uh, you lived in Japan or no, China? No, no, China? China, oh, in China, China. Mm-hmm. in China for a bit. And did you start stand stand doing stand up in China, or was it yeah, in Kiev? Yeah, well, uh, technically it's not not in China, but in Hong Kong. I I prefer to. Um, differentiate Hong Kong from China Good. Uh, Good point. and I started yeah the first open mic I had it was there and the first mm-hmm. open mic I saw it also was there and mm-hmm. that was amazing mm-hmm. uh, there was a popular comedian uh, whose name is Pablo Francisco and I saw his performance and I was really impressed and yeah. after that I decided that I would like to take part in the mm, a, as a performer mm-hmm. not as a viewer mm-hmm. That's awesome. And uh, and then you returned to Ukraine and you continued doing stand-up. Yeah, yeah. I was looking mm-hmm. for some English uh, open mics, but there were no so many. So English you started open performing mics. in English, yeah, not in English. Mandarin. Have you done it in Yeah, I, I did it a couple of times in Mandarin. Yeah. And it's difficult mm-hmm. because the the audience is way more different from from European people. Mm-hmm. The, the humor is different. It's yeah. more like racist, mm-hmm. more about food, oh. okay. some something like that. And the reaction is strange because it's like uh, the Chinese people at those uh, events, they laughed as if somebody ordered them to laugh. They mm-hmm. started laughing mm-hmm. at the same time and they stopped at the same time. It was really it was creepy <laughs> when I uh, yeah. was... Uh, that's interesting. But it was uh, kind of like international shows? No, no, no. It was just uh, Chinese Ju- Just Chinese? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Like most of the time I performed at the English-speaking shows, the mm. expats were doing. Uh, but I took part a couple of times in the Chinese-speaking. It was, like, it was for Chinese people and mm. they have like their own comedy. <laughs> mm-hmm. and What's popular in, in China in comedy? Is it... Stand up, or they have something else? Indian people, that's what's popular for them. Really? Yeah, they hate Indians oh, and they bully Indian. Indian people discussing food, especially food. Uh huh. That's mm. like the food delivery. Do they hate Indians because they make curry wrong? Uh, no, no. Uh, <laughs> just because, I don't know, many Chinese people they think that Indians are not civilized or something and they no. overlook them mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. feel like they're supreme mm-hmm. nation compared to indians because all well, indian people they're dirty they like shit on the street you don't have or, to quote this but yeah, thank yeah you. It, it, it's not me saying that it's <laughs> yes. yeah the it's, chinese it's the people bad saying chinese that people. Yeah, not all not chinese are racist <laughs> Most of them, right? <laughs> Some of them. I would say. I'm just joking. I've met a lot of Chinese people, and they're great. I taught in um, in a private school in Toronto, uh, and it was, it was a Chinese school. All of my students were Chinese, and they're great kids. So. Yeah, but the, there's one uh, important thing: uh, Chinese people who go abroad and who spend abroad a lot of time, they are way more different from. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chinese people who live and have lived all, all their life in in China. Mm-hmm. Hmm. It, it's it's totally different because before I came to China, I also had some groupmates who were from China, and mm-hmm. I, I thought like, whoa, they're wonderful people. Mm-hmm. They're the best people mm-hmm. on the planet. They're so quiet, so mm, I don't know, in uh, uh, so polite. Yeah. But when I came to China, it was totally different. Interesting. Is there a big class gap between like higher and lower class in uh, in China, in in Hong Kong? Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. especially between villages and the big cities, mm-hmm. there is a mm-hmm. huge difference. I, I managed to travel to a village, and 
it's it's terrible. Yeah. Uh, we don't have such poverty in our villages, uh-huh. unlike uh-huh. Chinese yeah. villages. But cities, they are like super uh, megapolises of the future. Yeah, yeah, they keep building mm-hmm. those like sci-fi buildings mm-hmm. there. Yeah, and everything, especially they're all. They have three lines. Uh, they share cities into three lines. It's like the first line city, the second line uh-huh. city, and the third line. The first line city are cities like Beijing, Shanghai, uh, I don't know, Guangzhou, mm-hmm. and Shenzhen. Those which have the population of fifteen million people and like mm-hmm. super super developed. The second line. Uh, are a little bit less developed and the th- third line are uh, the least developed and which are still much more developed than Kiev for example uh-huh. <laughs> no. interesting so have you been back to China since you moved to Ukraine no no, no. would you I, like I, to when, when I came back from China I was 100% sure that I'm coming back that I'm gonna spend a little time time in in Kiev and then mm-hmm. I will go back to to China. I was mm-hmm. sure about that. And I went told like my friends we used to do comedy with uh, in China that oh I will just uh, it, it will take me a few months mm-hmm. uh, in in Ukraine and then I will co- go back to China. Mm-hmm. But it never happened and actually I'm quite happy that it didn't have happen because now China is much different from the way it was before the mm. covid thing mm. and yeah. uh i heard that uh, they uh, start hating foreigners more and more because mm. uh, many chinese people because of the propaganda that's what i heard uh, they think that covid is brought to china by foreigners because mm-hmm. they were not quarantined and they bring all this mm-hmm. uh, stuff to them so like yeah. the new uh, new kinds of like the uh, of covid or uh, the no no not, not not the new ones uh, but uh, they they believe that europeans and all the foreigners they do not follow all uh-huh. the security measures and okay. they all mm. are infected and they shouldn't mm-hmm. be uh, let into yeah it's uh, crazy how covid has changed uh, some places so much more than others in ukraine we're like mm. covid well, what what <laughs> Yeah, there was, was no COVID. The, there was some COVID. Oh. What, what's COVID? <laughs> when? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, what else did I want to ask you? Uh, so now you're living in Ukraine. Do you, do you do anything uh, besides stand up? Like, yeah, do, are yeah. you teaching maybe? No, it's not teaching. I now work in a ch- Chinese IT company. Uh huh. Like mm-hmm. uh, some kind of a customer support. That's mm-hmm. how I would describe what I do. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like the there's a Chinese application, and I work as a regional manager of mm-hmm. uh, of the Chinese application here in this in in Ukrainian mm-hmm. and Eastern European yeah. region. That's awesome. I, for some reason, I thought you were teaching because I think because you went to China originally to teach English, yeah, right? Yeah. Everybody goes there to teach English. Yeah. You cannot go to China and not teach English if you are a foreigner, no matter mm-hmm. what country you're from. It's mm-hmm. it's a must because they pay so much for that. Yeah. And now even more because now there are not so many foreigners. And when I see the salaries they offer mm-hmm. compared to what I had there, I'm like, okay, I'm going to China tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. It's, it's the conditions are really great. The only mm-hmm. problem is that now you can't get there. It's very difficult. Mm-hmm. Into the country. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I have a friend that's working in uh, China. She mm-hmm. she's a teacher too, mm-hmm. and uh, she was performing stand up. Yeah, too, but. Um, now she can uh, work and live there because uh, he, she hasn't uh, moved from there mm-hmm. from the uh, starting COVID. Mm-hmm. So she she still she's can still there. Work. So she has no oh. problems with this. Mm-hmm. But uh, she told that there is a problem to mm-hmm. get there right now mm-hmm. for the people yes. who uh, don't be there mm-hmm. for this time. Okay, makes sense. I saw some stories some like on social media how like they just shut down the whole building and they closed 
everyone in and uh, mm. test them uh, like a few times a day to uh, like COVID tests and stuff. It's kind of yeah. And have you guys okay. sold the uh, TikToks with the rebels with people like doing? Uh, meetings against this COVID stuff. Wow, no, I never seen there, yeah, I didn't know there was, was some kind of like revolution you can or something there in Shanghai. Of, wow. It's terrible. They like strikes, uh, fights with the police now. Wow. Like Chinese people. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I know that you are about to visit some countries on the other side of Ukraine. You're going more west. Soon you're going to have a, a tour with the underground stand-up and um, uh, Svet Zahikevich, mm -hmm. right? It's just two of you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, you said 10 countries that you're visiting? or oh, I don't know. Maybe I just I, I'm not up. sure. I, okay. I don't want to lie. I, okay. just I thought it was about 10 cities. Yeah, not I think 10 cities. 10 cities. Yeah, 10 cities. cities. Okay. Are you excited? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's believable. Uh, so it's going to be in Ukrainian. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. going to be in Ukrainian. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, uh, like Ukrainian stand-up. Like there's an audience now in other countries for Ukrainian stand-up, for Ukrainian uh, language was, was all the refugees. Because like a lot of people are going on, on tours and just doing it in Ukrainian. I really dream that at some show there will be a person which will say, I'm sorry, I don't understand Ukrainian. Can you mm -hmm. please speak Russian? I already <laughs> oh preparing jokes for these cases. I really yeah. hope it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, you should, you should tell them uh, anyways. That's, yeah, like I the whole audience tells this person to fuck off. Or yeah, something. Let's beat them up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, have you, have you, oh, so we, we talked earlier and I asked you, like, do you come to Lviv often? And you said this is your first time, uh, in Lviv, but have you been out of, uh, leaving, have you left Kyiv, uh, since the full scale war, uh, to, to do shows in other towns maybe? Uh, yeah, I went to the West of Ukraine, uh, to Ushgorod mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. Chernivtsi. Mm-hmm. And uh, to the city of Kamyanske, uh, mm. to the central Kamyanske? Ukraine. Oh, okay. It's ah, and to Dnieper as well. Mm -hmm. And recently, I went to Kharkiv, mm -hmm. and uh, we are going to Kharkiv in in the late January as well with Mr. Anton Steniuk. Steniuk, is that yeah. the the ginger guy? Yeah, the ginger guy. He's really <laughs> funny. He's so funny. Yeah, yeah, he's very funny. Yeah. And he's very good at crowd work. Oh, yeah. Cool. Because um, I was in, in Kiev in May with David McSavage, and then um, he was in some kind of show in underground yeah yeah he was, was there yeah i remember it was anton uh, tomoshenko uh, svet zahikevich uh other Ant anton the ginger one mm -hmm. <laughs> and was it you were you yeah and, me as well. yeah and you mm -hmm. and it was just so funny because like anton started joking that he's uh david's son yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then he was start started saying that he's conan mcgregor mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so ridiculous but so funny yeah, yeah. it's very funny <laughs> Um, um, so I don't know I don't know if this is true but I, I watched so w when the full scale war started uh, you guys was the underground stand up started doing a lot of like online streams right uh, I don't know what do you call it like a just a stream right uh, uh, it like was, on YouTube yeah it's a format which is originally made by Serhii Lip Lipko it's mm -hmm. like the discussion of news and uh, initially it was offline okay. before the full scale mm -hmm. invasion mm -hmm. And then uh, they started doing it online and uh, still doing it to mm -hmm. to make the donations. Um, yeah, so I remember all, uh, all of the members of the underground stand-up, they were in different cities, you know, looking for a safer place to stay. Um, and so I watched some of the episodes, and uh, I think you mentioned that you were serving in the territorial defense in, in Kyiv or volunteering? Uh, or 
Yeah, yeah, it was like it's not the territorial defense. It's called territorial defense, uh-huh. but it's more like the volunteer. Oh, stuff so it's because, like self-organized. Yeah, when, when I was uh, taking part in this stuff, it wasn't like the the documented territorial defense. Mm-hmm. It was just uh, like everyone. Like neighborhood. I, I, yeah, I live in a close neighborhood, and when everything started, everybody like escaped, and mm-hmm. there was no security, and everybody was worried about their houses, so that there were no. Ma- marodiori, uh, the um, thieves, looting, yeah. the looting. Looters. Nobody was looting, mm-hmm. and we just like communicated in the Telegram chats of of the like na- neighbors mm-hmm. Telegram mm-hmm. chat. Like, let's do this scouting and checks mm-hmm. so that nobody was looting. Mm-hmm. That's what we were doing. And then when everybody came back, it was like got more complicated. Like the main who organized it all he decided to make the territorial defense and all this stuff and Mm -hmm. actually i think it's it's not so important it wasn't so important then you you can just do that without all those territorial defense stuff Mm -hmm. because no nobody's going that's not the territorial defense work it's just the neighbors Mm -hmm. So, so I had a like neighborhood watch but yeah yeah the neighborhood neighborhood watch did you catch any looters no, no. no. Uh, I heard that some guys caught some mm, drunk man uh-huh. who was like some crazy guy. Mm-hmm. And there was one more guy who was trying to uh, cross. The, there is like a fence and fence uh-huh. is uh, protected by the... Electricity? No, no, no. Drit, oh. drit. Oh, like spikes. Uh, like the spikes, yeah. yeah. And he hurt his arm uh, oh. mm. when trying to climb the fence. Mm-hmm. And, like somebody called the the ambulance. That mm-hmm. that was happened. Mm-hmm. Not nothing exciting. Thanks God, nothing terrible happened. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's good. Yeah, but you know, don't you wish you had like a cool story? Or do you do you have like a cool story? <laughs> uh, no, no. The best story I had is like uh, they once took us to learn some kind of self defense classes, Ooh. and we were shooting with the machine guns, and oh. that was the most exciting yeah. thing. But it was just one time because then they told us like, guys, you need to uh, pay some money to buy the the ammunition because yeah. you cannot get it uh, because all the armor is going to the front so yeah. it's not mm-hmm. so easy to get it and it's quite it's really expensive now some mm-hmm. i heard some people from the neighborhood they were buying the machine guns for two thousand dollars or something you know, yeah. I, I think it's quite expensive wow yeah yeah i can't uh, i can't even imagine what it must have been like uh being in kiev uh when like the full-scale invasion happened it's much better than kharkiv of course yeah what was your first day of the full-scale war like did you wake up to explosions oh no i oh. woke up just because i woke up mm-hmm. mm, and i heard that everybody phoned me mm-hmm. and i couldn't like my chinese boss called me oh. my father called me and i couldn't understand why they're caring about me so much and then uh, just my father told me that the war has started yeah. i heard some explosions yeah and i was just watching tv and i couldn't believe that this is happening mm-hmm. uh so since this is a stand-up podcast my question <laughs> is how soon since the full scale war, did you uh, ended up uh, doing stand up on stage again? I think two months later, after the full scale. So like invasion. March, April. Mm, in in March, March I think in yeah. uh, we started doing in mid March or late March. Was that the news mm-hmm. show you were doing, or were you doing stand up performance? No, no, the stand up performance. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was for me. It was difficult to join the show because uh, I had to go to the right bank from the left bank, and there were b- no. big uh, troubles with transport. You couldn't mm-hmm. get easily from one part of the city to another, yeah. and to get back from the stand up. I had to pay for the taxi like 400 krivnas. Yeah, wow. I, I could get to Kharkiv for this money. Uh, yeah. It's <laughs> like it's like a train ticket. Mm-hmm. Uh, Is it better now? Was the moving? From yeah, the sure. Right now, side now, now, now it's side. normal. Now it's now much it's better. Right, yeah. Maybe there can, can be uh, troubles during the air alarm and. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
but the subway is because working. of the blackouts but the si- subway mm-hmm. is working and everything everything is okay now mm-hmm. it's like before the war mm-hmm. okay. it's a better situation with transport even in Kharkiv because uh, when I was trying to get out from Kharkiv uh, I needed to pay to a taxi um, 10,000 wow. Wow. to the railway station mm-hmm. just to the railway station yeah Wow. Yeah, and, because they had to drive under the bombing. There were a lot of guys that uh, don't want to do it, even for 10,000. 10, yeah. How did you get to the station? Uh, I didn't get to the station because uh, there was um, a difficult situation in Kharkiv because there were a lot, uh, a lot of people there. They are staying for many hours uh, there yeah. and it was cold. I was with my daughter mm-hmm. and we can't move from there for two weeks. So mm-hmm. we two weeks stayed uh, at our home. Mm-hmm. And then um, her uh, godfather mm-hmm. uh, told me that uh, he is going to Alexandria mm-hmm. uh, to his relatives. And uh, he said, we can pick up you with us. And so we went to Alexandria and from there we get here. Okay. And you are from Kharkiv? Uh, from the Kharkiv region, yeah. Oh, Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was and living there all all the time before the full scale. And, uh, yeah. So, so uh, during I, I the full scale Kharkiv, invasion, you, you was, moved to uh, yeah, Lviv. Mm-hmm. Born in Kharkiv, lived in Kharkiv. Uh, when I um, started to study in university, I moved into Kharkiv region mm-hmm. in fifteen or twenty kilometers from Kharkiv. Mm-hmm. And what was and the, I stayed there uh, for for the studying of full scale. And what's the name of the town or the, what is it? Lubotin. Oh, I see. I get it. I'm a lucky guy because... Are you familiar with Kharkiv uh, well? Sure, I'm from Kharkiv. You're from Kharkiv? Oh, I didn't know that about you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm from Saltivka region. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh. Well, actually, and I came to Kharkiv two weeks ago. To visit your family, friends? No, my family are here. Everybody okay. is here. Mm-hmm. So uh, actually, I, I thought it would be like a tour trip to Lviv. I'll, uh, have oh, they're some, in some... Lviv? Yeah, they're in Lviv. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I thought that I would like uh, go to some restaurants or something like mm-hmm. that. But all my relatives are here. So I have to com- come to their place and eat what they cook at home. Like, what, <laughs> oh, what a yeah. fucking restaurant? Are you yeah. crazy? Let's go to our place. I'm like, I'm oh, making okay. borscht. <laughs> <laughs> we have like a lot of like great like cool restaurants in Duval. It's like a very touristy town, so it's very unfortunate you have to. Yeah, but now everybody is <laughs> like everybody is already planning to come back because I went uh, to Saltivka and actually now I feel they're even better than before the full scale invasion. I, I I know it's maybe it's bad to say so, but it's much more quiet because there's nobody outside. Yeah, less people when mm. when it gets dark. And, uh, but it's, that's great because it's easier yeah, to feel, manage those people. You feel really peaceful there. I felt like it was, was some You're crazy. kind of... Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> in Saltivka, you were feeling peaceful. Yeah, it, it's really okay. great. because uh, Maybe because these are the places I've known since I was yeah. a child. But for me, it was like uh, re- some, some, some kind of uh, retreat to, to mm-hmm. be there because no people outside everything is dark everything's mm-hmm. quiet no electricity problems problems because uh, mm-hmm. there's no mm-hmm. so, there are no oh. so many people yeah so they're not using so mm-hmm. much electricity so there's no need to turn yeah. off uh, the electricity because uh, the rest of Ukraine is uh, experiencing a lot of power outages because we need to uh, you know like be I don't know because uh, all the electricity from Ukraine is spread through all the Ukraine, and we need to uh, not use up so much electricity. But I'm saying only for now, for this moment, because yeah. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, know, yeah. or even in two yeah. hours, what's, yeah. what's going to be there. It, it can, the situation may change at any mm-hmm. moment. Because yeah, still, but, when the missiles from, mm-hmm. f- fly from Belgorod, there's no chance you can... Uh, mm-hmm defend Kharkiv yeah uh, that mm. uh, uh, it's too close as well as you can defend Kiev mm-hmm. or something else mm-hmm. so still if they decide to strike Kharkiv again yeah it, it's still dangerous mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. there are many times when um, the air alarm starts after the explosions mm-hmm. because they have no uh, pickups that signals 
Mm-hmm. It's too fast. Too, yeah, it's too close to the Too border. close and missile. Is yeah, nobody too, cares about... Yeah, I heard that nobody cares about air alarms because yeah. Yeah. you usually hear, hear the explosion and then mm-hmm. there's air alarm. No. Um, I was uh, regretting for um, quite maybe years about uh, that I moved from Kharkiv to the region. But <laughs> now I'm happy because uh, the uh, house I've lived before it's totally destroyed. No. And I'm thinking, I'm oh, that. that's great that I moved into region. Yeah, maybe if the war is over soon enough, maybe you'll still have a place to... Yeah. Uh, to For this moment, visit. I only have uh, several broken win- windows in my mm-hmm. place, but everything is still the way it was before. When did you move from Kharkiv? Uh, so... Did you move to Kiev or did you move to China? I to moved uh, from Kong? Kharkiv to China. And then mm-hmm. when I came back from China, I uh, I already lived in Kiev mm-hmm. in 2018. I see. Lots of changes for you. Okay. Uh, but you you were not doing stand-up in Kharkiv before? I was doing, yeah. yeah? I was doing before there was stand-up. I was doing stand-up in Kharkiv quite often. Oh, maybe Just, you guys know each hmm. other. Maybe. I, uh, hmm, by the way, she do, used do, to be very question. pregnant. By, by Maybe the way, you, <laughs> you remember way, do, that. Do you know Elina? Mm, uh, she's no. doing English stand up, used to do in Kharkiv as well. No, I did, didn't participate in English. Oh, but, but you participated in uh, R- Russian speaking and Ukrainian. Yeah, yeah. And which, uh, which organizations? No, Humor Lab, if you heard. Uh, wow, that long! I I just watched Humor Lab on YouTube, so mm. that's uh, for me. It's like the old legendary <laughs> comedy club because I saw the great Mister Kobzan only once in my life, and I managed to win the on taxi certificate when oh. I, when I took part in it. It was in the Konstitutska Square mm-hmm. next to the Konstitutska Square, and uh, yeah, oh, it's it was great. in Farsh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't far. It, it was one of the last uh, mm-hmm. parties, uh, and I went to split comedy quite mm-hmm. often there. Mm-hmm. And um, there were some events by Felix Retka. I guess he mm-hmm. also uh, invited me two two times or three times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Felix yeah, and maybe uh, Dima to Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Felix oh. and Dima in Heisenberg pub. Mm-hmm. But humor club is it's great. I uh, sometimes I watched it on YouTube still. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> because it's something I missed. Something I wa- wanted to join, but I was in China by that time. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. And that happened that uh, it's one of the oldest stand-up clubs. Yeah, it was the first stand-up club in Kharkiv, mm-hmm. and it was the first uh, stand-up on a regional uh, TV. Oh, okay. So what format was it on TV? It again? was just like a show. Like a... Um, like a host going into the stage and oh, here so we go. So just regular stand-up, not yeah. like sketches. Yeah, I think yeah, it, yeah. Was, cool. it was made in uh, 2013 or 2012. 2013, 2014, 15. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and but, I... Uh, then we uh, stopped... Uh, TV shows and uh, we just um, just doing regular stand-up shows. I still remember the legendary performance by Vasil Baidak. Oh. Uh, the uh, when he was in priest costume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, the oh. priest one, oh, the I priest stuff. I, I think it's okay. the funniest thing ever. Yeah. I, I really love it. We had Vasil uh, as times. a guest uh, on the podcast too, and we spoke about that a little bit yeah. with uh, him in the uh, priest costume. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Sort of funny. He's amazing. Like he's been fundraising so much money for uh, the Ukrainian army, and uh, recently he got a haircut. No, oh, yeah, and he sold he, uh, for yeah. a million hryvnias, right? Over a million. Uh, yeah, he fundraised one million seven or eight hundred thousand hryvnias uh, during that night. Yeah, wow, that's that's amazing. It's amazing to see like one person do that because mm. you know, like a lot, of, all of the organizations are contributing to war efforts and fundraising money to support our army. Um, 
but like to see one person achieve so much that's that's inspiring it's amazing good for him yeah um, I remember when I started, uh, when I did my first uh, stand-up gig after the beginning of the full-scale war, it felt very strange. And I, I remember I, I could only allow myself to joke about like Russia, basically, like just making fun of Russia, I couldn't, not like nothing about just daily life. Um, and it was, it lasted for a while, like first few months. Um, I, I only felt like I had the right to talk about the war. Uh, but now, like it's been a while now, almost almost a year. And uh, when did you start doing comedy? Um, oh, well, after the full-scale war, uh, my first performance was in in, uh, in March. But like I, I've been doing stand-up since mm -hmm. um, um, just a bit over a year now. I started in... Uh, uh, Zhovtyn, <laughs> October. <laughs> I forgot. Woohoo! <laughs> the I first felt, time I, I got when like she a, forgotten some words, and then I, I got a Zelensky some... moment, you know, when he forgot the Russian word. Yeah. Word. Uh, no, no, I'm forgetting English words. Um, yeah. I, well, I consider my beginning of stand-up career to be October here in uh, Kult Comedy Hall. But I've done one open mic before that in the summer while I was living in Cave I, in underground uh, stand-up. But I just I don't remember anything. I was like really scared. That was my first time. I, I had huge stage fright, and all I remember is just like a bright light in my face, and that's it. So like. Since then, I didn't perform again until I moved back to Lviv mm -hmm. and then went to Kult Comedy Hall to an open mic. And then it just, I met all the comedians, well, not, but a lot of comedians. We became friends right away and it just went on and on. And uh, it, I haven't been teaching since. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck teaching. Anyways. <laughs> so I'm just doing stand-up. It's my stand -up. to say this. <laughs> no, no, you do teaching. <laughs> She's a teacher yeah. still. Sorry. You know, like online or... No, online usually? because I'm working for Kharkiv region. Mm -hmm. I see that. Yeah, so she still works for a uh, Kharkiv school um, while living in Lviv doing... So, and your students, they're... Are they in Kharkiv region or are they like all over? Some of them in Kharkiv region, some of them uh, all over Ukraine, some mm -hmm. of them in other countries. So yeah, that's, that's wow. That's how school system works in Ukraine nowadays. Your local school teaching kids. I am teaching all over. All, all over the world. Uh, yeah. Glo global teacher. Yeah. Global <laughs> teacher. <laughs> Nastya, and could you imagine that before the full-scale invasion, you would move from Toronto to Ukraine and will be at post podcast in Lviv? Could I imagine? No, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> what, what, what would you think, like, when if you knew back then, if you knew that mm. several, I don't know, a year later, you would I, be? I here. couldn't even imagine that. I wasn't doing anything close to this. Um, I like I've what, always what, wanted what, to be an artist because I'm, I'm I'm a painter, so I oh. I could imagine myself being a creative so professional. You, you, bef before doing stand up, you were a painter. Yeah, and you still you still paint. are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't sell, but I still paint. No mm -hmm. one needs my paintings, but I still make them. <laughs> but it's like now you're making for a living just doing stand up. Uh, pr I mean, it's a very like a certain type of living yes <laughs> like a very humble living mm -hmm. yes i'm sorry if i asked you some awkward question no it's okay. okay but i mean with stand up like you at least for me in this point in the career i have to be very active to make money and very eager to make money it's like i have to look for opportunities to perform for paid gigs right mm -hmm. like they don't just come to me so like i have to search for them and i've been lucky enough to have opportunities to perform uh in other countries where i i got some like a bigger pay payment than i would performing in the, like doing a gig here and also like being part of a stand up battle club uh in uh, in Lviv uh, that's been great. Like I've been having a lot of opportunities. Ha you know, hosting this podcast has been uh, a great opportunity. Also, so we we're collaborating with uh, Stand Up Battle Club. 
Mm -hmm. um, to do this. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry for uh, switching to another question. Uh, Go ahead. What, what guys do you have like relations with other clubs? Uh, like there are other clubs in mm -hmm. Lviv and are mm -hmm. you rivals or are you friends? What, what is the relation in Lviv? Frenemies. <laughs> well, oh, frenemies. <laughs> kind of, um, it's complicated, but, but you know, I, I participate in, in all of the uh, clubs. And it's uh, okay, nobody's saying you, you shouldn't participate well, here and there. they know not to fuck with me because I'm a badass bitch. <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, some comedians might be having those problems from management. Sometimes mm -hmm. they'd be like, you're part of this club, don't go performing everywhere else. I believe that like, you know, there's limited opportunities to make money with stand-up. So I'm going to take every opportunity I can. Mm -hmm. So I've been performing with, um, so we have um, a split comedy club. Uh, you, you you just had like yeah, your I concert yesterday. yesterday with mm -hmm. them. Great guys. Uh, it's So it's like, um, what do you call it? It's like sort of like a franchise of the split comedy club in Kharkiv, uh, started here by Valentin Taras Tarasenko. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's, he's great. He's a very young guy just started this, uh, yeah, he's 21 years old. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he's managing it really well. Um, I had, uh, like I recorded, a. a a video was them and and it was like he managed it really well you know that was his first uh uh experience organizing something mm -hmm. big like that and and he did a good job so um yeah before uh, i met him in kharkiv and they were doing this management together with uh, nikita mechanikov uh -huh. mm -hmm. but now nikita he moved back to uh, he moved to kiev mm -hmm. and they are like in L lviv mm -hmm. yeah and uh, how did you guys join the stand-up battle club? As far as I mm -hmm. can see, you joined it not so long ago, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And how did you? Especially what, me. What, what, what's your story about well, it? Well, me, it was open mic, mm -hmm. and uh, well, actually, it all started with meeting a certain uh, one comedian whose name is not to be mentioned <laughs> in, in, in these halls. <laughs> Wait, why is that? You're here. <laughs> he's, oh. not, he's not um, a beloved uh, comedian by our manager. <laughs> they had a little bit. Anyways, and, and uh, we were drinking in the bar and I told him my set, my stand-up routine, and he laughed. And I was like, oh, since like a professional comedian is laughing at my jokes, then I should go and like on mm -hmm. on stage and tell it and then uh when i went to open mic i i met other comedians in um like the back room and and we got along so well and it just felt like i found my people you know like we i it's, it's so easy to talk to other comedians for me like we just have an instant click and it's like we're it's like we've been friends forever. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, there's a limit. We're not, we don't act like friends, but like talking is like so much, it's just so, I feel so free talking to comedians. Uh, and then that's when I realized that uh, that's for me. And then we started, I started participating in open mics and then um, trying to improve my comedy. And then I, I met uh, Bohdan Slipokura, our manager, and uh, he suggested to to do English open mics. Um, so I helped him organize that. And then in the collaboration, we've been working on, uh, mm -hmm. and, and doing lots of different projects. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's my story. And Valeria, we met only recently. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> it was... Um an accident. Mm -hmm. I was uh, living uh, that time in um, Ternopil region in mm -hmm. Berezhane. Uh, I moved there after the full-scale invasion and I was just searching some telegram channels mm -hmm. and uh, on one of them, I don't remember in which one, um, I saw that there is a stand-up stream. I watched the stream and thought, hmm, I was doing comedy a couple mm -hmm. of years ago. And I could do it right now. Why not? And then I went here for the open microphone. And from the... Um, when I... Uh, Did you see the when stream? I, when I finished... And see me there and you're like, oh my God, I can do so much better than her. <laughs> and then, then, then she decided <laughs> to go. <laughs> there were uh, 
couple of people that I saw that um, I could do even better. I'll name them. Who? Who? I don't remember who was on the stream, but I love starting drama mm. on that show. <laughs> yeah. But uh, there was uh, such a okay. You'll tell me later. Such a thought. <laughs> and uh, after I finished my performance, uh, Bogdan Slipakura went to me and told, uh, "Where do you perform before?" Mm -hmm. I said that I've been doing comedy in Kharkiv, and uh, he said, oh, mm, stay here, and went to our stream. Mm -hmm. And so that's it. And started. then you decided to move to Lviv from Chernobyl. Yeah. Cool. Just because of comedy. Yeah, the first uh, stand-up uh, gigs that were happening in Lviv, they were streams. We were fundraising money. So the first, mm -hmm. like, I don't know, five events, I they're all, like, bro it's live the, uh, broadcast. The Kulturna Oborona, right? different from that but yeah sort of but so Kultur no Brona started like in in March but stand-up started a little bit later and they're trying to do the same thing as was Kultur no Brona mm -hmm. to like fundraise money and uh, what was your uh like gap between you started doing comedy again so you were was were doing in Kharkiv in humor lab and mm -hmm. how many years passed after you started doing it again I started in uh, 2015, mm -hmm. but then I had some breaks. Mm -hmm. uh, first break was um, I had um, difficult relationships that uh, were been for um, seven years. And when we broke up, I had some kind of depression and uh, there was my first break. And another one break was... Um, after starting COVID, quarantine, and all of that, and yeah, well, everybody had the the break that, mm -hmm. that yeah, but <laughs> my break was for mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. oh, that. That. It was a lo mm -hmm. long term break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but maybe she picked up right where two she left years off. or maybe more. Yeah, it, but you know, it's your professional approach to stand up stayed with you so. but it's feeling like I'm, I'm starting from the beginning yeah yeah well i mean you're in a new city yeah but actually even if you do like one month or two weeks pause you already feel like you're mm -hmm. not sure mm -hmm. on stage yeah that's, yeah uh, that's uh, the thing i uh, hate stand up for uh, you're always afraid that you will be out of your shape because you mm -hmm. have it's like i don't know for me uh, i think it's like being a football player that even when football to players train. they are not in any club they have to train every day and mm -hmm. it's 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 hard how often do you do stand up uh, like in a week let's say i think n not uh, so much as i could uh, it's maybe like 3 or 4 times a week what's well, decent uh, yeah. yeah and but uh, if I don't have it, I try to go go to some, I don't know, I found some acting classes, which oh, are quite mm -hmm. uh, interesting. Oh my God, well, you are so good. Did you, but you, okay. <laughs> I'm too excited because I love when you like act on stage, you just oh, like lose you your much. shit. That's it's like the funniest thing I've seen. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. Did that thank happen after acting classes? Or? No, 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 no. Well, then it, you don't fucking need acting classes because <laughs> you're so no, great. You're, like I've never seen someone like just like go mad into this character on stage. It's, it's thank really you, funny. Thank you very much. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, it personally hel helps me to feel free on stage. Not, it's it's not uh, for me. For me, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. Like uh, the, the, this is the acting class. It helps you to improve your acting. Mm -hmm. For it works more like it helps me feel more free on stage if mm -hmm. I fuck up. Mm -hmm. well, I do not like uh, get panic uh, or mm -hmm. I get panic with uh, there's less chance I can mm -hmm. get, get panic mm -hmm. because uh, you have so much cringe during you, you have the acting class. You have to do some stuff mm -hmm. like uh, shine out the purple color out of yourself. Scream something like that. After Are you sure you it's do, not a cult? Uh, no, no it, it is. It is actually it is. And after you after you uh, do all this stuff, if you just have silence at stand ups, it's like oh, it's yeah. just a silence. Wow. <laughs> Thanks God, I don't have to shine the the purple color yeah. out of my stomach or something. Would you advise acting classes for stand up comedians? Definitely, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it's personal. I think it's personal for mm -hmm. for somebody. Uh, like it's it 
somebody doesn't need it somebody is too charismatic uh, it, it's just personal thing mm -hmm. maybe trying but uh, not forcing yourself into doing this only if you feel like you want to do this that's what i think mm -hmm. who are uh, your inspirations in, in stand-up my inspiration is uh, uh, <laughs> Oh, fuck, it's very awkward because I, I remember the comedian, but he has a very complicated name. Uh, yeah. um, just a second. Mm -hmm. If I'll give you a sheet of paper, you can draw it? No? No, no, I can't. <laughs> you I'm can not. draw him? <laughs> 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 yeah, we'll give you a sheet of paper, you draw his portrait, and we guess. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the name. Okay. Uh, it's, it's so con confusing because I always I try remembering the name of the comedian. Oh, I'm so bad at names. Too. His his uh, shows, but I always forget his name. It's a, a Dutch comedian. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I was recommended uh, him by a good friend of mine, Katerina Fedorkova. Oh, I love her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's she's. I'm great. like actually in love with her a little bit. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. you, You should tell to her. <laughs> I told her we were on a, like a dating show together, but like lo com comedians looking, mm -hmm. comedians yeah, looking yeah, for I, a I guy, and, but and we're she, on this side, not looking for each mm. other, unfortunately. Yeah. And she <laughs> recommended uh, this uh, comedian to me, and I really mm. love his performance. I just, I hope maybe there will be some, I don't know, uh, the subtitles or something. Yeah, we'll have to with add a, it with yeah. his name or. Uh, no. Now he should watch yeah, our yeah. podcast and uh -huh. write a comment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe you have to come back to another mm -hmm. episode of Peace yeah. Talk podcast and then remember who it was. <laughs> What, what's so special about this comedian? Just his performance. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just love his performance. And uh, I like Jim Carrey as well. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And Pablo Francisco as well mm -hmm. is also that's I think this is the main inspiration I saw because when I saw his live performance mm -hmm. I decided that I want to do comedy. Oh, he's, that's cool. He's a great guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you meet a lot of like stand-up celebrities uh, in in Kiev? You mean uh, Western stand-up? Uh well, any like locally, of course. I uh, well. I, You work he was with the, all, all the legends. Like you are the legend nowadays. I think I don't know. Oh, thank you. But like we, well, you work yeah, with Vasil Baidak, Svetlana Haykavich. Yeah, uh, quite quite many Tomasha. legends in 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 this aspect. Yeah. But also, you have like foreign comedians coming in. So uh, I know that David McSavage was in Cave because uh, yeah. we came to Cave together. Yeah, he's great. He was care uh, taking care of me so so much during the show. Like he he oh, was yeah. worried about me, so oh, yeah. and I was not nervous or something uh -huh. like. And he That's didn't good. let uh, Svet Zagaykevich and Dmitro Belos hurt me. Like he protected yeah. me all the time. <laughs> so I I love. Him. <laughs> Hello, David McSavage. <laughs> I hope you watch this. Yeah, he'll have to. He was on our first episode. Um, I'm going to make sure that he watches every single episode now. <laughs> Up to this one, too. Um, and then, so recently, there was... Uh, Just a second. Hans yeah. Damon. Oh? Hans Damon. Hans Damon. Mm -hmm. That's the Dutch. Yeah, the Dutch comedian, yeah, Hans okay. Damon. This is my biggest inspiration. Wow. I love him. Well, we have to look it up. Awesome. I wish he had more English stand-ups, not just uh, Dutch speaking. Oh, so But he has Dutch. one English speaking, and I'm mm -hmm. in love with it. I don't know how many times I have watched it. Cool. Hmm. Do you think he'll? Maybe we should invite him to to cave. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we'll, we'll cut this into like a TikTok or a reel. If you if you want to invite, yeah, please please come if you have this opportunity. What's his name again? Hans Steven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we should tag him. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well, we're gonna tag him and uh, I'll I'll private message something something. Yeah, nice I'm sorry for interrupting. To sweeten it. <laughs> so uh, also so recently you had um, 
um, my good friends, uh, our good friends, <laughs> Viktor, uh, uh, yeah, and uh, Fedor Igalar, mm-hmm. um, um, in, in do a concert in Kyiv. Any any other uh, comedians stopping by? I hope that one day. Uh, Uh, oh, that, you had Letterman perform, right? Oh yeah, but I didn't meet him. Mm-hmm. I, I was on my way back from Ushgorod mm-hmm. by, by the time. I really mm-hmm. wish I could meet him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really wish one day. Uh, uh, there's a comedian. His name is uh, Dragos from Hungary. He's quite popular on TikTok. Mm-hmm. He's he's in Berlin now. And he said that he might come mm-hmm. to Kiev once. Cool. I'd really love him to come. So well, if Drago, they come if to Kiev, let them come. know that they can stop by. Yeah, yeah, too. sure. Okay, <laughs> sure. Deal. We gotta work together. <laughs> maybe I, I wish I could see him when, when we go to the tour. Maybe I, I will mm-hmm. see him there. Yeah, I wish you all the best on the tour. Make lots of connections and, you know. Yeah, that would be great because uh, in Berlin, there's a great community. Yeah, I I've met this uh, this girl uh, Olha. Don't remember her last name, unfortunately. But she hosts uh, Ukrainian stand up shows. I think every week they have a, a stand up show, and that's amazing. You know, in Berlin, every mm-hmm. week they have, uh, but it, and it's a huge mm-hmm. crowd. It's it's like full full house. Um, yeah, that's it's pretty cool. I think. Um, Yeah, uh wish you best luck on on your tour. Um and um yeah, m- we should start wrapping up. Any any uh, any uh, final thoughts? Any well, people don't like it when I say final thoughts. Um uh, anything you want to You can share? say last word. <laughs> yeah, people hate that too. <laughs> last <laughs> what's your last word? <laughs> it was the butler. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like my my last words is just I wish uh, we win as soon as possible, and I wish uh, Russia stops existing. Me too. Yeah, that's yeah. the only thing you can yeah. say. Yeah, I hope I hope that happens soon. And um, okay, thank you so much. Thank for you guys for calling me. Yeah, of course. I, I saw uh, the poster for the show that you were doing yesterday and I was like, I oh, have to get him on the show. I'm very happy <laughs> that you're here and we got to talk to you and record this podcast. And we're doing an English open mic today and you're going to be like the headliner. You're not on the poster or anything, but in our oh, hearts, you're the headliner. <laughs> thank, thank, you. thank you guys for calling me. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. And Valeria, are we wrapping up? Yeah. Tell, tell them to have a good day. <laughs> or something. <laughs> okay. Have a good day. <laughs> okay, bye bye. I'm doing anything that she's saying to me to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's how it works. Thanks for watching our episode of Peace Talk Podcasts. Hope you liked it and hope you liked our special guest Alexander Kachura. You can write a comment below uh, about the best moment of our podcast. Make sure you give it a like and don't forget to subscribe on our another social media, on our TikTok, on our Instagram, on our Facebook page. And also I'm reminding you that we have Patreon and you can be our patron. So thanks for watching.